Welcome to Red and April Off-Grid. Join us as we build our off-grid homestead in the wildlands of Arizona. Well, we've had over a week off. We're ready to get back to work. We're going to go ahead and start on the garden fence. Now that the house is dried in, we can take a little break from that and go and get this plastered and get the fencing on top. And we'll tell you more about this air crate and kind of how it's weathered over the winter. Red will tell you about that. Well, we're finally at a good stopping point with the house and able to get started on the garden wall. It's spring, and so the planting season is just about here. The temperatures are getting warmer at night, and so we're actually able to pour, you know, concrete or do some concrete work without it freezing at night, and so it's the perfect time to get back to this garden wall and finish it up. We're using a recommended mix here for aircrete and for plastering aircrete with the fabric. So we're using fabric that we had left over from our septic system and we're using this recommended mix. It does have bonding agent in it and cement and kind of mixed at the right ratios. So we're putting a little bit of that on and then putting the fabric on and then going over the top of the fabric with another layer trying to kind of work it through the fabric there. It's actually pretty difficult to do. This batch is, is kind of dry and so it's, it's a little difficult to get it on thin, as thin as we'd like it. It's thick, it's hard to get it thin and so we're a little worried here that it might crack later but we're doing the best we can. This fabric that we're using we're a little unsure about. We don't know if it'll hold up over time whether or not the alkalinity in the aircrete will cause it to degrade. I guess probably the ideal material to use would be some kind of a fiberglass mesh, and that's probably what we would have used if we were using it on our house. But since this is just the aircrete wall, we're just using what we had on hand. Before we apply the plaster, we go over the surface with a coarse rasp to take off the high spots. And, you know, as I'm doing this here, I can really see the cracks in the wall. I don't know if you can really see it in the video, but there's some pretty serious cracks here that have developed and just widened over the winter time as this is sat. Looking at these cracks, there's micro cracking, there's huge cracks that just seem to get bigger over time. Just really came to the conclusion that this material isn't great for a poured wall scenario. It seems like it might work well uh, for bricks if you let the bricks cure long enough because this material does seem to shrink a lot and it seems like if you're using wet bricks that might be a problem. So I think if we were to try to build something aircrete in the future that we would probably try to build it with cured bricks. Another thing that you really can't see and it's kind of difficult to convey but there's a just a feeling of kind of hollowness and brittleness about this wall, this poured wall that we've made here. It just doesn't feel very strong at all. I mean, it feels really hollow. You know, this stuff is super light. It's really brittle. It's very cracky. And, you know, as we're about to put plaster on this, we're, we're wondering how long this wall is going to last. I mean, you know, would an animal trying to get into the garden, you know, knock this thing over or take a chunk out of it? We're really hoping that the plaster adds a lot of strength because the aircrete by itself seems pretty weak. As we were progressing along the long side of the wall here, we ran out of the fabric that we used for the septic system, and we actually bought some landscaping fabric that we thought would work, but it didn't work at all. It was way too thick, and we couldn't get the plaster to work through the fabric. And so we ended up abandoning the fabric idea altogether because it was really difficult to do. Uh, it's really difficult to work it in, to get it thin enough, and got it on too thick in places, and it was cracking. We just found it really challenging. Um, I think, you know, it can obviously be done. Lots of people do it, but it was quite a workout and we were struggling. So we decided to change gears and try something different and go with a stucco finish. So stucco is, is a mix of mostly Portland cement and sand, quite a lot of sand to the cement mix. And then we also added some adhesive or bonding agent to the mix as well. And so that's our stucco mix that we're using. And then we're applying that to the aircrete wall without any fabric. So we're putting on kind of a scratch coat first, or an initial first layer that's, you know, fairly thin and fairly rough. And we're going over that and then we plan to come back with a second coat later. As you can see here, we're, we are wetting down the wall before we apply anything to it. It definitely needs to be a wet surface in order for a you know, product to adhere. And we're also kind of experimenting with this mix. We've never done stucco. We're experimenting with the ratios like each backs and batch that I mix up here I'm changing a little bit we're tweaking on it trying to find something that really works adding more or less water playing with the consistency playing with the amount of sand that I'm adding to it and we're just mixing it up you know one bucket at a time and applying it 
And we're learning as we go. You know, uh, we're coming to the end of the wall here and finishing up the first coat. As you can see, the tools we're using also are not the correct tools. They're just some drywall tools that we already had. We didn't want to go out and spend money to buy new tools just for this little bit of garden wall. So we're making do with what we have and learning as we go. And we finally got the first coat on. Well, it's a new day and we're starting on the second coat. So we still have to put the second coat on the entire wall. And at this point, we're not really enjoying this process, to be honest. It's a lot of hard physical work and we're, we're just not loving it. You know, it's not enjoying the process. We're having a hard time getting motivation, only kind of working half days at it. And it just, I was afraid that this second coat was just going to take forever. I was dreading it, but it's actually going along faster than I expected. I'm having to make trips back and forth to the sand pile to bring in more sand. At this point in the mixture, I've added more sand than we were using originally. And I'm also making a much wetter mix. And it's going on better. And the concrete is going farther. Um, I'm actually still using less sand than the probably kind of typical or recommended stucco mix. Just because we, we like having a little more concrete in there. feel like it'll be stronger overall. But, you know, we're just kind of experimenting and doing what makes sense to us. Here you can see the process of me mixing up a, another batch. At this point, I think we've settled on kind of two parts sand to one part cement. I think kind of the normal ratio for stucco would be more like four to five parts sand to, to one part cement. So we're doing kind of a lower sand mixture because we really feel like the aircrete needs all the strength it can get. So we're, we're doing more of a high concrete mixture, but we really don't know what we're doing. It's just kind of our thoughts on it. Anyway, we've already got one wall done and we're coming around the corner on the long side. This is going pretty decent. This is, we kind of started after lunch today and we've already got one wall down and we're moving along nicely on the second wall. We're having to wet the wall down pretty frequently. The wall dries really fast in this Arizona sun. Just going to have to wet it down frequently as we go. Uh, one thing I'm happy about is that the, the stucco seems to be sticking to the previous uh, scratch coat, you know, we, d we didn't know if it would stick. It almost seemed like we would have trouble with it not sticking once we added more sand, but it seems to be doing great. Stucco is actually kind of a neat process. Like I say, we've never done this and I'm sure we're not doing the best job. And, and it, it definitely looks very rustic. You know, the, <laughs> the work we're doing and the trowel work we're doing uh, is very rough. Actually kind of like the look. Rustic isn't necessarily a bad thing, but we definitely don't have the skills to make it look smooth and uniform. Moving around to the last wall here. This is the wall that the girls had done late last fall, just before it started getting too cold to do this freezing every night. This is a really smooth plaster surface and we weren't sure that the stucco would stick to it, uh, but it does seem to be sticking fine. So very pleased about that. It's going on great. And we're almost finished now. We're in the home stretch. Just got a little bit more to go and we'll be done, completely done, plastering and stuccoing the garden wall. I will say that it dries pretty quickly and once it does, it feels really nice and solid. The stucco layer is actually pretty thick. And so we feel like this kind of thick stucker, stucco plaster layer has added a lot of strength to the aircrete wall in general. It's done. Doing the final cleanup. Next up was the installation of the gates, but before I did that, I wanted to check the level of these shipping containers. It's been about a year and a half since these were set and leveled, and I wanted to see how much they'd moved. Uh, they had moved a little bit, but not a crazy amount, surprisingly. And actually, the one closer to the garden had moved a little bit more, so I decided to adjust it slightly. The other one didn't need any adjustment. So I actually had put a jack under, and I'm making a few minor adjustments to both sides of the shipping container. Here you can see I'm kind of shimming up a little bit, and it really didn't need to change it too much, but I... You know, I was just curious how it, how it had done after sitting on these bricks for a long time. Fortunately, this area doesn't really have freeze and thaw cycles. You know, the ground just doesn't freeze here. There's actually no frost line. And so just having it set on blocks like this actually works pretty good. It probably wouldn't work as well in an area that was wetter or that had, you know, serious uh, freeze and thaw cycles. Well, I've made my adjustments and I'm checking the opening and closing of the big doors at the end. You can tell you know, by how easy or how difficult they are to open, how good your alignment is. And these doors have always been pretty stiff and I actually improved it quite a bit this time. They're, they're much easier to close. And I, so I think I've improved the alignment 
and the levelness uh, of this shipping container overall probably even better than it was originally so glad i took you know an hour or two here to make these adjustments i feel better about it now i've been curious for a long time and so now i'm ready to move on to the gates this is actually footage of the second gate. I've already put one in, but we didn't get any footage of that. I'm trying to use repurposed lumber or lumber that we've used in the forms or any, something like that so we don't have to buy new. Here you can see that I grabbed the wrong piece. <laughs> and cut the notch out. You know, I'm trying to notch it in real tight, but grab the wrong one. I'm like, what did I do? And I realized that I, I had grabbed the cutoff instead of the actual piece that I cut to length. And so I had to go back and redo that. I'm trying to cut out that little notch so that it goes over that piece of uh, block and all fits in real tightly. So what I'm doing is I'm using treated lumber, attaching one board of treated lumber to the shipping container. And then I'm putting this kind of seal plate in, which is a reused piece of four by four treated lumber that we used in our forms and making a seal plate. I'm actually taking some rebar and I'm attaching that to the ground in the correct place, and that'll be the seal plate for the gate and allow me to make a nice tight seal on the bottom of that gate. Instead of trying to just put it close to the ground, I actually have a piece of wood so I can get it, you know, maybe a quarter inch or half an inch off of that and have a pretty tight seal along, along that bottom edge. Here I'm trying to screw this first piece of, of wood into the shipping container, and boy, it is really thick metal on the side here. The corner pieces of these shipping containers is a really extra thick piece of metal. But I was able to get it through. It was a bit of a challenge. Here you can see me actually driving in uh, the rebar to attach this seal plate securely to the ground. Um, as I drive these in, I kind of angle them to make sure I miss my water line, which goes under here pretty close. So I want to make sure I don't hit that. But that'll, this rebar will keep that piece from moving as we go in and out. With the frame in place, I'm ready to move on to building the gate itself. And so to build this gate, I'm using some 2x2, two two, roughly 2x2 two two lumber that is also reclaimed lumber from our forms. Been used a few times, so it's great to get another use out of it, put it in its permanent home. And I'm also using some scrap sheet metal, some cutoffs that we had from our home build over there. And so this is, we're not having to spend any money on these gates. It's all kind of reused materials. And it seems to be coming along pretty well. I'm just kind of building a rough frame and then cutting some supporting pieces to kind of support the corners and keep it square. And then attaching that metal piece, which will actually provide the majority of support for the frame itself and keep it from flexing or bending. That sheet of metal gives an incredible amount of rigidity to the frame. The metal piece is some of that charcoal gray, so it actually matches the lower portion of this wall here, the aircrete portion, and it's at the same height so it kind of flows and it also keeps up that two foot block. We kind of want that lower block to keep animals, small critters that are at ground level from seeing into the garden and seeing those new baby plants and so hopefully they'll be less motivated to try to get in our garden wall and so that was kind of part of the conceptual design of the garden wall as well. Here I am, I'm hanging the door so I'm mounting it to that piece of treated lumber that I attached to the shipping container and making sure that it's you know close to that seal plate that I put in along the bottom. And I'm mounting this side flat board, so it's just a piece of plywood that spans the gap between the frame I made and that T-post that starts the fence. Well, the gate is in, and I'm liking the way it's fitting. With this little flap here that takes up the, you know, the gap between that and the T-post, it's pretty tight all the way around, so I'm probably an inch or half an inch or less gap around the bottom or along the side where it meets the aircrete and then really no gap between the gate and the fence itself, so it's pretty nice and tight. The last part was to make my own latch uh, that, that can be opened from the outside or the inside, and so I didn't know how I was going to do this, and, and I just kind of started playing with it. I ended up using a bolt that goes through the kind of the gate, and there's a block of wood on the inside that I attached to the bolt, and then I made a metal handle. And so anyway, I can use that metal handle to open it from the outside, and then you just move the block of wood from the inside. Well, we're ready to actually start stringing up the wire now and finish this fence. We ended up getting a four foot tall roll of chicken wire. And so that spans the gap, works out perfectly for the height here. We had just about four feet of pole sticking up. So it's a four foot tall fence on top of our two foot tall aircrete. The reason we decided to go with chicken wire is, it, is it's a light wire. It's not a real heavy stiff wire. And we wanted a wire that wouldn't put too much strain on these posts and on this aircrete wall because we felt it was kind of weak. 
And we also like the tight weave. We wanted a pretty tight weave on the mesh. And so this worked out well and it was fairly inexpensive. We didn't get any video of it, but we did. I did attach rebar as a top rail all along the top of this. So it's half inch rebar and then just connected to each post at the top. And so we did that so we'd have something to attach this, you know, light gauge chicken wire to. We knew that it would need a lot of support. And so that is working out really well. We attach it frequently to the top rail. I also put some rebar along the bottom in different places. And then we strung a, like a heavy gauge wire in the places where it ran out of rebar for the bottom rail. So we have something along the top to attach it to and something along the bottom to attach it to. So we're just attaching it really frequently. We're not trying to pull it super tight. We're just kind of letting it hang naturally and take out as much slack as possible without getting it too tight and putting a strain on these posts. But with the frequent attachment, it's actually looking pretty nice and I think it'll be a good tight seal as far as keeping most critters out. Well, we just about have this garden wall done and we've been keeping track of the cost and we thought you might be interested. So a few kind of notes and details about it. We ended up using 18 batches, roughly estimate of aircrete in this. So 18 batches of aircrete. Used quite a bit of cement. That was our biggest cost, $267 there. Used about $115 of chicken wire. Uh, the T-posts were $110. And then we had some bonding agent with 75 and the rebar was $72 for a grand total of $667 for this fence. It is 91 feet long and so that works out to be about $7.32 per foot and that includes the gates. Overall the price wasn't too bad but you know looking back on it if we weren't doing this wall for the purpose of learning aircrete probably would have made more sense to do like a cinder block wall or something like that instead but you know this this helped us learn aircrete and and it helped us decide that we didn't want to use aircrete, which, which I think, like I say, ended up being a good decision for us. In our next video, we'll be finishing up these gates and kind of outfitting the garden with all the raised garden boxes and stuff that April is going to need to plant a nice garden. So stay tuned. If you're enjoying our videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out our channel.